But what I'm doing, wash, wash, tick. I'm washing my clothes today. Oh, yeah. Whoa, 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 yeah. Yeah. My washing machine, tick, 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 is washing my clothes, tick, 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 because it is laundry day today. Like my six pairs of drawers with nothing to do but spin in the washing machine all day. Let me hear you wash, wash, ding, ding, me washing my clothes today. Oh, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. yeah, hey, yeah, in stores now. <laughs> Greetings one and all, this is Lloyd Brown. Welcome social media family to my vlog, yet another vlog in the series. And as promised to you, I am going to be giving you a tutorial on one of the um, two pieces of software that is my go-to software whenever I begin writing a song for my productions. And it is Easy Keys. So let's get into it. Right, after a lot of faffing about and sorting out my videos, sorting out my settings and sorting out my audio levels, we are here at the Easy Keys songwriting tool. That's the best way I can explain it. And if you've not heard of Easy Keys or in fact any of the Easy Key range, please check out tunetrack.com. I'll put a link in the description box below. Um, TuneTrack makes some really, really nice songwriting and music production tools right and easy keys is one of them and they have some called easy drummer and superior drummer as well but i'll go into the easy drummer like i stated before in another video but here is easy keys and i just want to go into the interface and how to compose um the start of a song because if i go any further any deeper the video is going to be too too long so here you have the interface and in the top middle you have upright piano and if you click on the drop bar there's only upright piano the simple reason being is because tune track they sell other extension other keyboard extensions for example the Rhodes organs Wurlitzers Mellotrons grand piano uh, mini grand and um, they can prove to be a little bit expensive so what I do or what I had done was actually just stuck with the the one upright piano in this piece of software because if you are recording your music through a digital audio workstation chances are is that you're going to have other tailored um, instruments in the DAW so what you can do with this is actually record the MIDI um, the MIDI sounds or the MIDI data rather from this and if you don't like even any of the sounds that's coming from this you can transfer what you've recorded here into your DAW and you can get one of your preferred instruments to play the MIDI data that you recorded from here which I think is worth the admission price alone so you can do that and here's another tip as well um, if you want to record some bass um, to go along with your um, your keyboard the best thing to do is actually to um, erase the right hand MIDI notes and keep the left hand MIDI notes and edit them by taking out some notes or duplicating them or what have you and importing that into a bass instrument that plays MIDI as well that's a quick way of going around it so there's a handy tip for you but um, going back to the interface so you have easy keys right here and you have the library upright piano with which is only one piano in the library you can get um i think it's the ultimate piano bundle which is like six pianos but that costs too much money you know what i mean i just think that is a waste of money when you've got other pianos in your daw but when you go into the, your presets and you have the standard presets you will find when you click down that there's quite a few um, it's quite a few to basically choose from some sound similar some sound slightly dissimilar 
and some sounds different altogether. But um, with each preset that you have here, you have an assigned um, effects preset within the preset, if that makes any sense. So with the standard that's marked here, you've got four buttons, reverb, tone, detail, and compression. So if you want to alter any of that, you can turn one of the buttons right down to zero or turn all of them down to zero or max them all up and listen to the sound they give you. Now, here's another tip and it regards um, the MIDI controllers that I was talking about. I'm going to get one here. Right. Keep your eye on this as well. Now, one feature that um, Easy Keys has got is um, the Learn MIDI feature. And this is what it basically does. When you go on a button, right, you right click it and it has the option to MIDI Learn. That basically means that if you click on that, then the interface is going to look for any buttons that's on this controller. Now, the only way that it's going to know is by me assigning a button to that particular button right there on the interface. So I can turn any one of these buttons, but from the moment I alter the value of one of these buttons, that button's gonna be the one that's gonna be assigning to that particular button that I've activated MIDI Learn on, okay? And I think it's a good feature for the simple fact that when you want to get precise sounds or precise levels and you're working with a mouse, it's pretty hard to achieve, especially when you're doing a very long session. Sometimes you can get tired and your finger can slip and, you know, erase something or whatever. And with a MIDI controller, it takes all of that crapola out of the session where you can turn the buttons as you would do a normal volume button and you can get precise level controls. So try and get used to um, recording in that way or altering volume levels or effects levels in that way by using the buttons in the MIDI controller. It doesn't make sense you buy one of those and you don't use the buttons because you're not getting the full potential out of that. So there's another tip for you, okay? Right, now with these buttons that I'm gonna alter, I'm gonna turn all of them down to zero right so with that that's not how the standard upright piano sounds right so if i like that particular preset of that sound or let's even come out of standard and go into southern comfort right click on that i'm gonna play some keys okay so you can hear those. Now with the effects that are associated with that preset, if I don't want that effect in Southern Comfort, I can turn all of these down and make my own preset. So once I've turned them down, I click on the drop down menu, go into save as, and then it gives me the option to save the preset. So I'm going to call it Lloyd Brown Tings. Okay. So I'm going to click OK on that. And there you can see it's given me that preset. It's called Lloyd Brown Tings. Now, remember, this is the Southern Comfort preset refixed. Okay. So if I go into the Southern Comfort preset. Take a look at the bottom left hand corner and look at those buttons and see what happens. I'll go into Southern Comfort. See, it automatically puts the Southern Comfort presets in the default position. I go back into mine, go into User Presets, Lloyd Brown Tings. Okay, so that's how you can make your own presets. Now, if you don't really want any customized presets, you can select that and delete it. So click on delete 
Do you want to remove presets Lloyd Brown's tings? Remove that and it's done, okay? Now, with that being said, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this thing. Now, how to start songwriting, I'm going to show you. If you look on the top left of the timeline, there's a little box right here. And this box will basically add chord to the song track. And the good thing about this, as you, you've just seen, when you hover over a button, it just tells you what the button does. Do you know what I mean? So as you're going through the actual programming, you're recognizing what button does what, and it just becomes second nature to you. Do you know what I mean? So you hover over that button, and with each press or each click, it's gonna give you one chord. So I want four chords. So you go one, two, three, four. Now the standard chord is C, okay? You wanna hear the C chord? Just go back here, press space bar. Okay, so that's a standard um, four chord, right? Now, in order for me to basically work with that amount of chords in the time I want to record it in, I gonna click on the loop button. See, it says it right there, enable disable looping. So I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna give an orange bar at the top, which is going to signify the length of the loop, right? So I'm gonna play this again. Now, I'm not really feeling the tempo, so I wanna raise the tempo a little bit. So you just hover over the, the, the number of the tempo, the beats per minute. Like I said, look, it says it right there. Dialogue bar, adjust, adjust the tempo of the song track. So I click on that and it's gonna give me a slider, which is gonna enable me to slide down or slide up, okay? So I wanna bring it to like 140. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, there's also a metronome, which you can turn on and off. So if, so let's say, for example, I'm in a part of the timeline that has no music. Press play. And I think you can alter the, um, the metronome settings by clicking file. No, sorry, clicking settings rather. Metronome settings. And the first beat is always gonna be the hardest beat with the three softer beats to mark the time. So you've got different metronome sounds. So with this, you can preview it, which is standard. But you can also cycle through the sounds. Right, so obviously you can't have two soft buttons because you won't know where is the start when you record. So you always got to have a hard but a hard click for the first beat and soft clicks for the other three. So I'm going to cycle through the hard clicks. So if I don't like the soft clicks, I can choose another soft click. and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go back to the original. Okay, so that's how you can um, customize your metronome of all things. Right, so going back to the chords. So now it's the tempo is at 140. So let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> Okay, I like the tempo. Let's take out the metronome out of that. But I want to get busy with the tune now. So here is where things really get interesting. Now, when you see these chords here, how you change the chord, it is so simple. All you have to do is put the cursor 
over the chord name. So whenever you see a little red transparent box surrounds the chord, that's how you can change it by clicking on that and it gives you a chord wheel, okay? So when you click on any of these chords, it will play the chord that it is basically. So instead of C, you can play A minor, E minor, B minor, and so on and so forth. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to find a starting chord. I found my sequence. So I'm going to start in B minor. Okay. Then I'm going to go into the second C chord. Click on it, change it to E minor. Go into the third chord, which is the boring C chord. So I'm going to go and click on B minor. Okay, and with the final one, mm, F sharp, is it F sharp minor? I think. Okay. Now, one thing I must let you know is that I don't know the names of chords to save my life. I just basically play the notes in a particular group. And if it sounds right to me, then I'll play it. I can play a chord, I don't even know what it is and my guitarist can tell me, yeah, that's F major seventh. Don't know what you're talking about, mate. I just like the color of the chords. People can read music and basically play it just like that. But with me, it's different. And I know a lot of people have different ways of, of putting chords together, but that's my way. But it suits everyone, whether you're proficient or not. You know, it's just so intuitive and so easy. Right, so the loop button is still on because you've got the red bar that's highlighting the length of the loop. So let's hear how those chords sound together. Here we go. Metronome. So I like that, okay? I like that vibe. Now, this is when things are gonna get really interesting. So now we're gonna look for some playing styles. Now we're gonna go into the browser right here. And now you can see all of the MIDI files that are made available for you um, as part of the package with the upright piano, okay? Now at the bottom, you've got the music theory examples, which are basically examples of chords that make up the spectrum of music played by a keyboard, okay? So you've got key signatures, circle of fifths, chord theory, major chords, minor chords, dominant chords, half diminished chords, diminished power chords. So you've got all of that, but you don't even really wanna to even touch that because I know you just wanna start writing straight away. You can basically just go over that at your leisure, okay? Because what they're going to show you is what you're going to instinctively know when you start writing in this way, okay? So forget about those for now. What you need to concentrate on is the Easy Keys MIDI, okay? Which consists of um, expansions, um, small expansions of, no, sorry, small versions of expansions that are made available through tunetrack.com and they have got loads and loads and loads and loads of expansions. Um, neo soul, reggae, blues, soul, country and western, rock, you name it, they've got it, okay? So those are more or less the, the expansions that are available. 
And this is the reason why there's so many of them. It's down to the playing style, okay, of these things. Now, I've already pre-chosen what I want to play. But before, before it's more or less finalized as to what you want to play, the section comes up one by one. So this will be the first section that comes up, which will be um, the basic chords, which we've got here. So we don't even need to go in there. And also the genres of music, the genres of the style of play by a keyboard. So you've got soul, R&B, country, gospel, jazz, Latin, blues, um, boogie, funk, effects and endings okay and what easy keys have basically given you they've given you a template of many different styles of playing um there's only like a small selection um of the vast amount of um expansions that are available and you also have in fact you know what i'm not even going to go into that let's just stick with the program so what we got here is country so I've chosen country straight four four time signature and I've chosen a verse played in a ballad at 90 beats per minute and there's four variations of that play style in that tempo okay so I'm just going with variation one now you have an option to preview it in original tempo and I'll tell you why it is um, it's advised to listen to it in the original tempo it's simply because of the notation you can hear the notation and imagine it at any tempo do you know what I mean but you want to hear the notation you know which notes are played in which order at which time do you know what I'm saying because if you're not a proficient um, keyboard player anything you anything you you test is going to sound good but you want it to sound melodious with the chords that you've already programmed here so let's preview in original tempo and go to variation one click on that actually adjust that tempo to half and you'll hear this and you can actually hear the um the sustain pedals going up and down that's a lovely touch such a lovely touch it just sounds so natural um, when you hear the sustain pedals go up and down. Right, so you can change it from half the tempo to double the tempo, and it sounds like this. Okay, so in some cases, you might need to use the adjusting tempo section that's there, because sometimes um, the style of play might not be quite in the pocket and depending on the certain riffs and melodies and stuff like that that's when these adjustments prove effective but you don't want that so go back to normal but even in normal it's playing at a very it's, sorry I've got the wrong button even at um, normal the the tempo is still slow so now what we want to do with this, we can either put it here. And if you like the overall vibe of that chord progression, which not no wrong, you can put it in your timeline and then you can hear it at 140, which is like this. Without the metronome. Right. So as as you just seen, I can I can take 
I can take the variation, grab it, and bring it into the timeline like that. Now, I've made a dog's dinner of this. So if I wanna get rid of that, there's the undo and redo button on the bottom left hand side. So I'm gonna click this and click it again and take that out. Now, I want that style of play in these chords. Okay, and it's so simple. All you have to do is click on, oh, click on this tab here. Use browser, use browser MIDI. But in order, in order to do that, you have to select a section of it, okay? But I want to more or less join all the four sections together. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the whole section, right click on any part of the section, scroll down to merge selected blocks, and it's giving me one block of that entire chord progression, okay? So because it's one section, I can utilize the use browser MIDI function. So I'm gonna click on that and it's analyzing it. And now I can play these chords in the style of the variation one, verse, country, straight, four, four. Okay, that's what it sounds like. I'm making and tune on easy keys for YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Give me the Twitter love, baby. Eh. Give me the Twitter love, baby, 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 baby. Yo, 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 yo. Yeah. Boy, yeah, yeah. Okay, so already there's a vibe starting because you got the metronome kind of kicking in and as a cheap drum effect, if you like. So you can take the metronome off. Now, if you don't like that, we can undo that and it will play the original sustain chord okay just to show you there's another different type of play here let me choose variation four So we're kind of getting into gospel vibes here, even though it's it's a country genre, as it were. But it's, you know, sounds gospel-y to me. So we're going to do the same thing. Use browser MIDI, analyzing it, and now it's going to play that play style to the chords I've arranged earlier. Here we go. Right, so that doesn't sound too good to me because it just sounds compressed and fast. Now that's when the tempo adjustment button kicks in. So now you can play half, half the speed of the tempo and then try it again. Brown says so. <laughs> so 
So that is basically the start of your songwriting. Now, if I'm not feeling that, click use browser MIDI, goes back to the same deadpan single chords. Yep. And if I want to duplicate it, I just copy, click, paste. Very familiar computer commands, okay? And I can take the loop, bring it down, cut it in half, or I can take the cut button there and do it in the same fashion. Just put the, the scissor icon just there, press click. If I wanna cut this in half, press click. I wanna press that in half, press click. And there you have it. But if I don't like that, I can, I can undo it all over again to the point where I just got the four dry chords. Right, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. That is basically the beginning of how you can compose a song on easy keys. I can go in much deeper, but if I start, there's not going to be enough time in this video. Do you know what I'm saying? And there's plenty that you can do, but I will follow it up with another video with me actually composing a whole song and finishing the song and how I can export the files by MIDI, by WAV file, depending on if you think it's completed or if you want another instrument to play the same MIDI files as you've composed on here. So that's it, more or less. So until the next time, I'm gonna hand you back to the studio. And there you have it. Some of the features, not all of the features, because there's so much to talk about in Easy Keys that you can basically perform in that piece of software as a standalone piece of kit. You don't even need to use it in your door. You just basically use it one away, standalone, and it's done. You can import WAV files, MIDI files, it's all done. So it's with that, I hope that you've enjoyed this first episode of my tutorials. And thanks for watching, thanks for stopping by as always. And you done know the coup. Please, people, abstain from foolishness wherever possible. And until I catch you on the next one, people stay blessed. Magan.